Better. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Power Hour. Hope you're having a beautiful day. As you can see, oh, I'm here in uh, Middle Earth, Lord of the Rings. <laughs> actually, where is this? Oh, okay. I'm looking at my background right now. This is actually in Australia. Oh, you know what? Real, real quick. The the um. The, was it the drain tree rainforest? That's what it is. The drain tree rainforest of Australia, of north northeastern Australia. It's actually right there is the uh, place in the my, my background. So if I look right here, um, is actually the inspiration for the film Avatar, um, the planet. And uh, it was interesting when you go exploring, you see some trees there that are nowhere else in the world. And that's why it was really one of the good inspirations. But uh, speaking of which, today what we're talking about is uh, basically you and all of us as individuals. And that is uh, the uniqueness of all of us, what our lives and everything that we have and how we are so special, you know, that there's only one you in the world. And whenever we have a life experience, it adds to that uniqueness. It adds to that special qualities that make us who we are. That's one of the things that one of the life lessons that we have today that we're going to talk about is what about our some of these experiences as uh, as we look at some of these things and explore them today. Also, if you have any questions, if anything you want to share today, please feel free. I believe I can see myself here. If you have a comment, if you have a something you want to chime in on. Uh, please feel free. And we always like to start out with just a little bit of a shout out uh, to see who's on, who's on today. Uh, where are you viewing from? And uh, let us know. I like to check in with all everyone and see who's on today. I'm having trouble reading my comments. Bit here. of a shout out uh, to see who's on. <laughs> Heard myself. Greetings. Whoa. Copenhagen, Denmark. Wow. Well, welcome. San Francisco. Rockford, Illinois. Where the Rockford files are, huh? <laughs> Nisqually. Awesome. Great. We're coming in from all over. So what's the weather like? Let's try that. Let's uh, put in your degrees. Where are you at right now? Let's see if you can beat mine. Sure is Nevada. You guys will probably beat mine. List your temperature right now. Tucson. Oh, I got you beat in Tucson. All right. Burns Paiute. I think I got you beat, Burns. Let's go. Put in those degrees. What do we got? Montera. Port Townsend. 68, Raven. Nice. Sounds beautiful, but I got you beat. 88. Okay. Warming up, Alyssa. But I got you beat. Santa Fe, 90. Woo. 70, 79. Those are some beautiful weather. Man, if I went over there, I had to wear a jacket. Okay, 72. Well, currently here in the land of the Acumel Autumn, Mesa, Arizona, we are at, dun, 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 and it'll be backwards most likely. 102 degrees currently. So Pat, I got you beat by 30. <laughs> so what's my reward? I get to stay inside and if I go outside, I sweat. So boom, 102. All right. So this is a great way to just check in with everyone see that we have people on today from all over the place. All right, and please send me an invitation. I want to go visit you at Tulalip 89. I want to go visit you. I want to go to Copenhagen. That'd be pretty cool to go over there uh, and welcome all of you out to Arizona to visit here. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share a picture right now. So this picture 
is one of the life lessons and it's a, a familiar life lesson that we all probably are having and because of the shared experience that we have the shared experience that we have so here is the picture all right so you see the smiles right so this is on miami beach florida we had just uh this was a training that we had put on in uh, uh with the mikisuki tribe and that is the one I was doing was working with native uh, youth. And I think uh, Jolene was doing wellness in the workplace. At this time, we had questioned whether or not we were gonna have the training because of the rise of the COVID cases that were happening at the time. This picture was taken March, I believe this one in particular was taken March 11th, 2020. I was there in Florida. I was, as a basketball coach, I was preparing uh, for the basketball season. Our season starts up in the spring and we go all the way through summer. I know that that week when I got back, we were gonna head out to UCLA for this awesome tournament that's put on by the native students that, that go to UCLA. And uh, we were debating whether or not to have this because there didn't seem to be a turn yet, uh, but we talked to a lot of our participants. They were still set to go. The hotel already had a lot of safety protocols. Keep in mind, this is before what we say face masks and everything. So um, I went to the store a week before and got a bunch of these, these wipes. Can you see it? Where are we at? These wipes, right? And they weren't even the good kind, but I got a bunch of them. Uh, and I got a bunch of uh, hand sanitizer, right? And when I had come back from this trip, they were all gone. <laughs> they were all gone. So luckily, prior to leaving, I had bought a bunch of it. And I bought them for the, the trip. So we had the, uh, the wipes all around. We had hand sanitizer. I had hand sanitizer for every one of my participants in the training. Uh, but everywhere I was going, I had the hand sanitizer. I got it in a plane. I mean, not a hand sanitizer. I had the wipes and I got on the plane, pulled it out, psh, wiped everything down. I even gave it to the people sitting next to me here, wipe it down, you know, um, just taking all the precautions that I could. And, um, you know, we weren't sure what was going to happen, whatever. But literally, while we were there is when everything hit the fan heard of that phrase i know we say something else but it was more than just that <laughs> everything hit the uh, uh, uh the fan that day and when we look back we'll remember certain things like the ncaa final four shutting down nba shutting down and then tom hanks tom hanks testing positive at that point there was a shift that happened correct there was a shift that happened and that shift was that we were going into a lockdown. Now, it was something that we never experienced before. I'll go ahead and uh, pull this off. I had to go back to my Zoom. It was something that we've never had as a shared experience, my age group with some of your age group. And here we are in this realm that something that we never encountered before. So what was the things that we felt? And that's what I'm asking you, put down in the comments, are you watching today? Just think about that. What were some of the initial feelings that you felt? So one of the scariest things to all of us is the fear of the unknown. And it's so scary, in fact, that we look to avoid the unknown. Even if it's consciously something that we're aware of, unconsciously, our brain hates the unknown, right? Why is it that you drive by this restaurant and there's the same restaurant everywhere you go. And it's a restaurant that you always say to yourself, I need to try there one of these days. Yeah, I need to try that out, but we never go, <laughs> right? Do you have, you know what restaurant I'm talking about? That same place you drive by, it could be a diner cafe, but you always say to yourself, you drive by there, I wanna eat there someday. And you drive by it all the time, but you never eat there. Well, what, is, what is the reason? It's the reluctance of our unconscious, our unconscious just loves to fit patterns. Our unconscious loves to go to that same place we always go to in order of number seven. You know, when you go there and they even place your order before you even sit down, oh, there's so-and-so, get that number seven ready. You know, that's what I mean is our brain 
loves that. Our brain loves the same coffee from the same coffee place. Our brain loves the same route. Our brain won't let go of that shirt that we bought 10 years ago and it doesn't even fit anymore, but we still wear it. Our brain loves those things, right? What our brain is resistance is against things that are new to us. And when our brain wants to avoid new situations, wants to avoid the uncertainty, what it does, it doesn't just send us messages of being uncomfort. It sends us messages of fear. You see, our brain is wired that way. Our brain is wired for us to be in a protective mode. Whereas, you know, and that's part of why we, you know, when we say like, you know, how some animals turn colors, some animals, you know, they do certain things when danger comes. Well, we don't have that ability to camouflage. We don't have that ability to have quills pop up. You know, we don't have that ability to protect ourselves in that way. Our ability right here is sensory awareness. So our, our frontal lobes are bigger for us to figure out different situations and analyze it, right? And to think about things. And that could be a problem for us because then what we do is we perceive danger differently than other animals are, right? Whereas other animals rely on scent or sight or movement or sound, what we rely on is our thoughts and our thoughts can scare the out of us, right? So go back to that day. Do you remember that? That day the uh, when the pandemic really did hit, Tom Hanks positive, NBA shut down, Final Four shut down. What were the thoughts? Now, if it was like me, if you were like me, your thoughts would be fearful. What's going to happen? Right? What's going to happen? Right? Fearful. How are we going to get past this? Fearful. How long is this going to last? How long do I have to live in this uncertainty? Right? And what was our hope and prayers? Well, I'm sure some of our hope and prayers are, man, I hope my loved ones are okay. I hope no one gets this uh, 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 gets this virus, right? That's where a lot of thoughts were going. Our thoughts were even started when we hear, <coughs> right? Hear someone coughing, all right? Uncertainty, right? That cough didn't mean somebody had COVID. Prior to COVID, people coughed all the time, right? You go to the movie theater, you hear that cough, <coughs> but all of a sudden now COVID, now that cough is a trigger to us because of the fear is initiated. And what did that fear do? Well, we reacted we reacted right so i said when it before i left i could go into a store and buy one of these right i could go to a store and pick up hand sanitizers pick up all the stuff we need right to make sure that we're safe and we're there toilet paper i could go to the store get my toilet paper within two days all gone Within two days, all those options are gone. That's how we knew us as a collective unit, we're all fearing the same thing, all facing the same circumstance, right? So one of the lessons that we take from this is, how do we react? This is more of a self-reflective question, but how did we react? And when we go back and truly examine the uncertainty of what was happening worldwide, and it was a shared experience, how did we react? Where did our thoughts go? What were we most afraid of? Where do we go to for support? Um, those are important things to get out of this because it's very rare where we have a shared experience like that. When I mean shared experience, it didn't mean if you were uh, 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 from India or from Hawaii or New Zealand, or from Kansas, right? We all felt the same thing. We all experienced the same thing. Uh, so when we go back in history, and this is why we wanna mark this time is what was our first experience of this? What was our expressions during this time? You know, I had a lot of fear, as I'm sure a lot of you did, a fear of the uncertainty. One of the fears I had was job security. I thought, uh, you know, keep in mind, I had never 
used Zoom before ever. Now, if you look, I use it all the time. I even use it on this power hour, right? And it's just me, <laughs> but I feel comfortable. I feel comfortable using Zoom, right? And, and prior to that, right? Prior to that, I uh, never used Zoom before. So when I look back, because I had not that experience of being online, my thought was this, simply this, okay? I do basketball camps. All right, I do uh, workshops, workshop presenter. I do uh, these trainings for Native Wellness Institute facilitators. Sometimes I come in and do training for staff, do that. Um, I'm also a, a speaker, keynote speaker. And entertainment wise, I do hypnosis shows, right? Those are things that keep me busy. And if you look at all those things from coaching to uh, uh, the entertainment to facilitating, they all involve one thing, right? Gathering of people. Gathering of people. I made a living by being at gatherings of people. That's where my source of income came through my work. So when we were told we can't gather, right? Uncertainty, fear, and it hit for real. It hit for real. So what was my reaction? My, one of my first reaction and we're talking, I'm not even talking months into the pandemic. I'm talking like when I got back from Florida <laughs> that weekend, my reaction was this. I canceled all my subscriptions to everything except for Netflix. I, I, I do a lot of subscriptions to like gym memberships, to uh, my chiropractor is a sub subscription. Um, games on my phone, apps on my phone, I canceled them all for this fear of not knowing where my next paycheck was gonna go. And probably too is because we had already got word that all of our trainings for that entire calendar have been canceled within two days. So I knew it wasn't just me going through that the tribes were that we were scheduled to go to, that I was scheduled to go to, were already calling and saying, we're gonna cancel, we're gonna cancel. So yes, it was a scary situation. And so what happened? What did we do during that? Well, what was my reaction and how did I take care of myself? Well, one of the things that I want to do is just focus on uh, what we say that medicine wheel. And the medicine wheel tells us this, is that when we allow our emotions, it throws everything off. And what helps us with those emotions, because they're all interdependent, is I started to create, I started to do things that I hadn't done in a long time, and that was right. And write, uh, um, when I say write, anywhere from poems to short stories, I just wanted to write. I felt that that needed to add comfort to me. And I started to read uh, some of the books that I had, reread some old books, uh, went on Amazon, bought some new ones. Why did I do these things? Is because I wanted to do things that I was created with. I started to uh, 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 create things. I started to play with uh, Legos because they were easy to order online and they would come in and I just create stuff. Now, it wasn't as much the play as it much was just building. I felt like I wanted to build. And what I was doing, I was taking care of my mental well-being, being at home. Now I live by myself. So when we talk about during that first lockdown when it happened here in Arizona, um, I mean, I, I had whatever I had here in the home. So I did a lot of cleaning. I did a lot of rearranging. I did things that would keep myself, my brain occupied, but I also wanted to be creative, which is why I did the writing and, and, and why I did uh, played with the Legos, built things. I built a lot of Star Wars stuff off that. The other thing I started doing is making videos of, it was actually our 25th year for our basketball team. AZ Warriors is celebrating the 25th year. We had planned uh, some pretty cool stuff that year and we were unable to do it. But what I was doing is going back and putting together videos of old, uh, of all the old teams and things like that. So I was trying to be creative during that time, right? Taking care of my mental wellness. Uh, the other thing that I was doing was working out a lot. Uh, at the time we weren't at a hundred degree weather. We were, it was still cool outside. It was only about 92 <laughs> and I'd go for walks. Um, right out here. So I live in the city. So I don't live by the riverbank. Some of you are real lucky to live by a river or ocean, man, I'd be out there every day. What I did is I went out and walked the uh, canal because that's the water source I'm next to walk in the canal. All right. And prayed a lot, prayed a lot, had my medicines right there. And luckily I had just uh, gotten some 
uh, more medicines went out and had some that were given to me. And I had that with me. So the reason I'm sharing about that is because when we look at the four areas of wellness, I knew the one part that was going to be a big struggle for me was emotional because in an emotional runs our fears. It runs our ability be, to be happy. So by focusing on these other things, I think I helped counterbalance what would have happened emotionally uh, throughout the times, you know, cause it's tough. And uh, we were in our brain goes in that place of uncertainty. Well, our brain fills in the blanks. There's a lot of blanks. One thing that we're not really good at as human beings is uh, predicting the future. We're good at analyzing previous outcomes, but we're not real good at predicting the future, you know? Uh, and we do that with our own behaviors and everything. Talking, I'm talking not like as a world trends, I'm talking about as individuals. Uh, for example, a good example of that as I always use is if we get a message from our supervisor manager saying, I need to talk to you as soon as possible. We can't help but to go like, oh crap, I messed up or I am in trouble or something's gonna happen, right? Our mind kind of goes there right away. Our mind kind of goes there right away. Um, and so, you know, we're, and, and sometimes it has nothing to do with that. Every now and then, yeah, we might get called in and get fired or yelled at, <laughs> but sometimes it's just like, oh yeah, I just wanted to go over this with you. And then it's like, oh, okay, good, right? And, and, and it's part of that anticipation, it's part of that unknown that I talked about before. Remember, unknown, fear of the unknown is the biggest fear that we have. When we go into a dark room, nobody, here's the thing, nobody is afraid of the dark. Let's put it that way. Nobody is afraid of the dark. What we're afraid of is going into a dark room in the unknown of what could be in there if we can't see it. Really, when we break it down, nobody has a fear of loud noise, what we have is the unknown source of that loud noise, right? That's what it's all about. Fear of the unknown is, and fear of heights. <laughs> fear of heights is real. <laughs> fear of falling is real. It's not really the heights, it's falling that more that we have, right? So these fears really start to blossom during a time of crisis of unknown. So going back to that, some of the behaviors that came out of that was really about protective behaviors, survival behaviors. Some people survive, uh, survival behaviors were different. I didn't stock up on food because I watched the markets that I went to, uh, the markets I went to, Whole Foods and uh, AJ's market were always stocked on food. I was surprised. I did go into another supermarket, Safeway, and saw that everything was gone, meat, eggs, milk, uh, they were all gone, but they were always plenty of supply at Whole Foods and at, at AJ's. So I continue going there. Um, one thing about America too, is that a lot of what we saw, the box and the frozen were gone, the milk, eggs is gone, but at all the markets, all the fresh produce, <laughs> the vegetables, they were all there. What does that tell you about us? <laughs> Hot Cheetos gone, toilet paper gone, but fresh produce, plenty of. So as, as we already start to uh, examine this, it's good to go back and self-reflect on what, what, what did we learn from that initial thing? What did we learn about ourselves? What I learned was that um, I did my best to take care of myself and not follow the full panic. Um, luckily, I did have enough toilet paper already uh, that lasted me uh, <laughs> throughout. Uh, and I could see where that could be a panic where you had to go out and look for uh, paper goods, you know. Um, but uh, for me, what I really did is I really went inside myself to take care of myself during that time. And, and you utilize all the things that you know that are going to take care of you. I did a lot of calling people on the phone and talking to people, uh, talking to Charlie Tailfeathers is one of the things that helped me through this uh, because he always had a positive, great attitude about it. So in looking back now, as we've transitioned from that time, now we're a year later, and I look back a year ago this time, it was still pretty scary, particularly in Arizona, it was still pretty scary. Uh, but I can look back right now and think this, what were the lessons I've learned over the past year? What were the lessons that I've learned over the past year? And some of the lessons that I've learned for myself, and, and if you could go ahead and comment there, what were some of the things that you learned as well? That would be great. But here's some of the lessons that I learned Number one, um, 
so Gandhi is known for saying, um, live today like it's your last day. And we use that phrase a lot, right? Live today like it's your last day or live and we, we change it, but it's the base of the same concept of like live like there's no tomorrow or live like you're gonna die today. And what he was really talking about on that was about the gratefulness the, to not take things for granted on a daily basis that um, give everyone that same welcoming that you would do as if it was your last time you're gonna see them. Uh, treat everything as if you're so grateful, you know, that, that when that water is given to you to drink, when somebody gives you a glass of water, treat it as if that was the greatest gift that you will ever get in your life. To show appreciation for life when you wake up, one more day, thank you for this one more day. You know, everything that's given to you is a gift, right? But here's the thing too, everything that's given to you is about survival too, isn't it? Everything that's given to you is about survival. But here's the part, and I just brought that, uh, that up, but here's the part about that saying that we all miss because somehow it gets cut off, right? Going back to Gandhi. Uh, live like there's no tomorrow, but, or live today like there's no, no tomorrow, but learn today as if you're going to live forever. That's the second part. Learn today as if you're going to live forever. And I think that's the part that we forget about, is that as human beings, we're ever evolving. And our goal in life isn't all about just getting a good job. I know that's something that we're taught in early age elementary is to be a contributing part of society. But really, when we look at our traditional life, our, wor our world doesn't stop at being a contributor. You know, we're meant to become elders and not just any elders, we're, we're meant to become smart, intelligent, gracious, loving, compassionate elders, right? Compassionate elders, right? Our life cycle tells us this, is that we, have, we live through here and go to here, right? So learn as if you're gonna live forever. To me, what I mean, what I say, what I hear is this, is that we don't know when this time comes, but we gotta keep ever evolving right? Ever evolving. If we live 60 years, that's a long time. I mean, I'm not saying, hey, you know, make that your goal. <laughs> but I'm saying, you know, 60 years is a long time. In today's society, five years, look at all the changes that happen in five years. In five years, think about this, 20 years ago, um, not everyone had a cell phone, right? kids didn't have cell phones and now we see how change how quickly things change right how quickly everything goes and we take it for granted that we think these things has always been here but no it's a short time that these things have been here i mean facebook how long have you been on facebook right you're watching this right now on facebook it, ha it hasn't been here your whole life things change so much and because things change so much one of the greatest things is for us as people that we can learn uh, from even how our ancestors live is that adjustment. We think that traditional living is about keeping things the same, but what traditional is about your values and your, your principles. That's traditional. But we know we apply those values and principles to every situation that we're in. Our values and principles are just as strong in a plank house or, 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 or a, a, a sweat lodge as they are in the workplace, right? Those, those values are meant to be our way of managing throughout the world. Our traditional values is like our remote control, right? Our remote control, our remote control works on the television, on any station, but yet no matter what the station changes or what the show is on, our remote control works on it. I guess the analogy for that would better be a, you know, controller for a video game. No matter what game we're playing, we still got to go through the remote control, right? it controls our movement there. Well, that's what our value systems, that's our culture, our values and principles. 
that's our leading era that can be applied everywhere um, to what we do. So that's the lesson in there. And where, where, we, uh, where do we learn our values, our principles? So they come at a young age and we apply it to everything and we continue to learn how to apply that knowledge, right? So at a young age, when we got strong back, strong legs, strong knees, maybe we're the ones carrying all the, helping carry the heavy stuff and giving it out to the elders. That's our contribution to our value. Uh, that's, that's honoring our value system of being a service and uh, having the body to do it. Well, when we get older, we don't have that body, right? But we can still be a service in other ways. So throughout life, we're learning to adjust not only to our current situation with our with our age, but also to the times that are around us and everything. Um, so um, learn, learn today like you're gonna live forever. It's a really strong uh, phrase when you put it all together, what it means is showing that appreciation and it's looking forward to more opportunities and more access to great things. Uh, and, and that's the other thing is allowing ourselves to have that access to great things. So that's one of the things that pops in my mind when I think about uh, uh, over the last year was really about, man, I started thinking about being an elder. I don't know if you had that, but I started thinking about elder. But not only that, what kind of elder do I want to be? Right. That, we often say, hey, there's elders and then there's old people. Right. There's elders and there's old people. Well, what do we want to be, <laughs> right? What do we want to be? Do we want to be an elder in our mind and the elder, the person that is giving love and compassionate or do we just want to be an old person, <laughs> right? Uh, I want to read some of these comments and share some of them because they're coming in here today and I want to hear what we had to say. What were some of the lessons that we learned? Um, so, <laughs> Rosalinda says, I got 30 year old t shirts. Hey, there you go. Still repping, still repping that MVP, right? That all tourney softball tournament, too, huh? So, Caro, uh, Kari, I'm sorry. Let me say it right. I had to put on the specs. Yep. Oh, this is another thing that happened in the pandemic. I had to start wearing these. Carl Billy, I felt so worried about the kids being anxiety ridden and immediately wrote a song called beautiful heart in danish asked the young people to share their thoughts and worries when i was a kid it was nuclear war and a's that kept me up at night the youngsters today has so much more on their plate yeah you know and, and we think about that's another thing that we think about is uh i had some young people asking me about how come they're calling my age uh, i forget the name they had for it but they say how come your people your age i mean are are just so anxious and I shared the same thing you know when we grew up in the 80s 70s and 80s cold war we were in always on the brink of war that it seemed right it seemed like any moment we were going to have a, a, a total holocaust or something happen and if we look at the media at the time everything had to do with uh, the apocalypse uh, everything was out there we were constantly being told the world's going to end the world's going to end I remember since dates that come to mind, and you probably remember the 1984 world was supposed to end, 1988, the world was supposed to end, 1992, the world was supposed to end, right? We were constantly bombarded with this stuff in movies that came out, uh, you know, remember all those movies about nuclear war? Remember all those movies about us fighting Russia? Remember Red Dawn? Red Dawn when uh, uh, um, the Russians actually landed in a small town and took it over uh, or tried to, but then uh, there was, uh, who was in that movie? Help me out. You guys remember that movie. Was it, a uh, 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 what's his name? Patrick Swayze. Wasn't he in that movie? Charlie Sheen. I think so. Something like that. Well, anyway, they had to come and rescue the, uh, these farm college, farm boys, college, uh, high school football players had to come and rescue the United States from <laughs> Russia. Yeah. Those are the type of movies that we watched. Right. But we all thought that here, here's something. And uh, I love my dad, <laughs> but I remember one morning, one morning, and, and my dad was all into that stuff too. And I remember one morning I was getting ready to go to school and he called me and my brother over and he said, uh, hey guys, um, just wanna let you know that uh, today there's gonna be a big earthquake. 
And uh, when it happens, just go outside and go to the big yard field right there and just pray and pray and everything should be all right. <laughs> I think I was like in fourth grade, third grade, something like that. And I remember my question was like, because when I thought of earthquake, the first movie I thought was Superman when they had the earthquake and the opened up and Lois Lane fell in, right? And so I remember say, asking about, well, what if the earth opens up? Right? What if the earth opens up and people start falling in? And then my dad said, well, if it opens up, just run away from the part where it's opening up at. <laughs> and he was he was all calm. But yeah, he was, I don't know what was going on in his head, but he seemed very, I actually went to school thinking we were all going to die. I, <laughs> I thought we were going to have an earthquake. But that, you know, that's the 80s in a nutshell, right? We didn't have internet. We couldn't look up things for ourselves, right? <laughs> <laughs> we could have say, hey, this sounds a little bit shady. We just took it, the information as it came to us. And I mean, look at uh, uh, during those 80s. I remember that uh, we call them the, I call them the TV in the classroom moments. We had two of them during the 80s. Uh, first one was Reagan being shot. And the second one was uh, the uh, space shuttle exploding. Those are two TV in the classroom, right? Where the teachers went and got a TV and brought it in so we could watch the news. And those are big world events. Uh, but there was also so many things that were going on. And again, the movies told us, and the movies are the stories that we saw at a young age. And again, if you've seen previous uh, Power Hours, you hear me talk about the storytelling years on that chart. That, those are the young years, our elementary school years. The stories that we hear, form our belief system. And when our belief system during the 80s was based on Russia attacking, uh, uh, nuclear holocaust, even though as good as they were, like Mad Max, remember those post, post uh, 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 apocalyptic, post apocalyptic movies, um, Mad Max and that Patrick Swayze movie too. Remember that one? All those type of movies that came out during that time. That with um, all the slashers, the Freddy Kruegers, the Jasons, the Michael Myers. So you can imagine if you're a young person growing up with that as your stories you're being told, you are going to have a lot of fear. You are going to have a lot of fear of the world, you know? Um, and that's what we grew up with. Those were the high box off office movies. So yes, anxiety matches the media. You know, anxiety matches the media. And so for my generation, um, even though this is the first time we experienced something like this, like a shutdown, our go-to is what are the stories we've been told if we've never experienced it? If we've never experienced it, then we can't say, hey, I've been through this before. This is what it's like. No, we had to find in our memory bank, where may have we seen this before, right? And where we've seen this before was, remember that Stephen King book, right? Or you remember that one movie about that virus? <gasps> this is what we're going through, right? That's what we relied on. So fiction became a big part of our truth during this time. And not just for me, myself, when I say fiction became a big part, I'll show you, I'll give you an example of how fiction, um, what fiction is, fiction has an intent. Fiction is designed to get your attention and entertain, right? So the reason to say fiction is because it may not have a basis of truth or it doesn't have a basis of truth, right? That's what writing fiction is. So on my first power hour, and please don't go back and watch out my first power. It was, I, that's one of those things that was reacting to fear. <laughs> and I'd never done Zoom before. I didn't know how to do a power hour. I don't know what I did. I had puppets. <laughs> I was singing kids songs. I don't know. I went into my Mr. Rogers mode, I think. I don't know. All right, but one of the things I did on there, and it was just based on fiction. Now, whether it's in a book or I see it on a Facebook post, it's still fiction, right? I gargle with salt water because somewhere I read or somewhere I heard is that if you do that, it keeps uh, it, it keeps the virus away. So there I am 
gargling on camera on my first power hour, so you don't need to watch it stay away from that first power hour <laughs> right but normally i would not do something like that but it seemed like at that time it was i was in an era and a lot of us were of how our reaction and, and and fiction can become truth and i only did it because i thought it was real right i thought it was real my brain is more open to solution when you're fearful, right? Your brain is more open to that. Uh, um, so if you ever watch, and, and, you, and, and a good analogy to that too, is if you ever watch those hidden camera shows, right? When they put people in a real situation of fear and anxiety, and they're real anxious, they could tell them like, here, spray this on that zombie and that this will kill a zombie if they have a fake zombie and they'll do it right just not even thinking like will that work or not um because we're looking for outlets for safety right so what is it what happened during this time is we got a lot of fiction thrown at us anything from you know that our our telephones were causing the virus remember that uh to a lot of things that were uh, that was being said at the time, um, and what was happening is that we start to be taken on as if it's truth, right? So when we hit that fear mode, we moved away from our core values and principles, didn't we? I know I did. And what we had to do is realign ourselves back with that, right? Back with our core values, back with our uh, 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 principles. So what we, some of us had to experience what was called uh, adapting to our cultural ways, adapting to our cultural ways of how do we rely on that. One of the biggest things that we rely on to help us balance ourselves as people is ceremony. Well, the ceremonies changed uh, for some. Some of them didn't. And uh, some of them went on with the old ways of how they did ceremony. But behind the ceremony is the intent. And behind the ceremony is the heart, the spirit of the ceremony. And what we had to learn as people is to find that heart and find that intent and that spirit of the ceremony within the structure of our home. And it was tough for a lot of us. It was tough for a lot of us. But when we were able to find those things, right, they helped us, right? Uh, I wanna read a couple more of these that we have up here, comments, uh, because you know, I love to hear these stories. That's the conversations we have. We get together. What was your experience, right? What was your experience? I uh, didn't think it would expand as much as it did. Took off wildfires in a drought. It did, didn't it? It was just, bam, got out there quick. Thank you, Sheila. Eric Strader. Huh. And what? that it looks like Swedish to me. Is that right, Eric? Welcome. First thought, survival and truth. Be still, watch, and with happy face, palm tree, fire, peace. <laughs> well, remember, <laughs> we have to remember Trump was an ignorant leader when when this hit. That was my fear. Yeah, leadership is always important in, in, in times like this. Uh, leadership in, and uh, when you have a lot of confidence in your leader, it helps you be at peace. If you don't, it can be pretty scary, right? Hey, somebody missed my face. You missed this. Plenty of water here. Let's do a takeover and have a huge powwow here in the Nusset region, probably already in the works. Thank you, elders and ancestors. It probably is already happening. All right, the great toilet paper scare of 2020. I studied more on herbal medicine and wild edibles oh, growing in my backyard. And here's the other thing, be honest, how many of you went ancestral? Meaning went and picked the leaves when you ran out of toilet paper. <laughs> well, you had to say, guys, I'm going to the bathroom and it's gonna get ancestral in there. <laughs> Less attitude, more gratitude. All right. 
Ah, oh, thank you. Getting a lot of appreciation there. Where can I get that wonderful chart? Well, Frank, uh, one of our training, uh, if you come to one of our trainings, we present that and share that with you. Susan, I just watched it again this weekend. Not sure which movie that was, but yeah. Wolverine, see, there we go. Red Dawn, zombie apocalypse, now virus, 20,000, uh, 20, 20, oh yeah. I remember 2000, remember the year 2000, kind of similar things, right? Except again, that was anticipated uh, fear. That was anticipated fear in, 20, in, in the year 2000. So we didn't actually go through anything, but we we're anticipating something major. And, and that had a lot of fear. I know a lot of people who quit their jobs and, and saved their money and moved. I mean, not personally, you just like read about what things that they did. Um, because of that fear and everything. So I didn't want this all to be about fear, but it was just more of a lesson that we learned over this and what did we do to deal with our fear? And it's a self-examination. These are great questions to ask yourself and even to have somebody that you can sit down and talk about it, talk about what you went through, talk about what you learned uh, during the pandemic, what you learned about life, what you learned about yourself, what you learned about your family during this time. I mean, there was a lot of lessons that were out there uh, during this time for us, because it, we could see things in a different way. Um, you know, it's like, uh, think about this, is that we're so used to seeing everything and every when we're in our comfort level, right? But COVID turned off the lights in the room that we're so familiar with. And think about this, the only light we have when we go introspective might be a black light. And when you turn that black light on, you see things in there, that dark room you never knew was there, right? Think of it like that, of what self-reflection does is we turn off our usual way of looking at things and take in, okay, now we're gonna look at it from a different perspective with a different light on different things. And we might see things there that we didn't see before. Those are great lessons to have because, you know, our struggles are, are, are whether it's as a whole, or as an individual, struggles are gonna be there. Struggles are gonna be there. And it's not always about just get over it and move on. You know, of course we need to move on, but we need to move on with lessons. We need to move on. So again, two questions. What did I learn from this experience? And here's the second question. How am I a better person because of what I experience. How am I a better person because of what I experience? I mean, that's two great self-reflective questions to ask yourself about that time or anything that you go through. You know, we suffered a lot. Uh, we suffered a lot of illness. We saw healthy people get sick. Uh, we saw people pass, right? Uh, we saw people lose their jobs. Some instances maybe even lose homes, right? And in those instances, we still have to look at how did that incident make you a better person? Now, that's not saying that in particular, that incident you benefited from, but it's you as a person who is always, always in the motion of self-development. How are you better for what you learned from that experience? experience? You know, because we all need to make that shift. Remember, we're trying to get, become better elders right? What are we learning so that we can live forever and our legacy can live forever, right? So those are good questions to ask yourself about this time. So with that, let me say a couple more highs out there. We got Rhonda. Here we go back with the glasses. By the way, when I wear my contact lenses is when I had to wear these. Otherwise, I just wear my regular. Um, Mary DeBerry. <laughs> that is a cool name, Mary DeBerry. I kept telling our youth that we are in historical times. Tell a story, draw a picture, and two, lessen family and stronger and NW rocks for power hours. Yeah, you rock Mary DeBerry. You rock with that name. You should be, you should be headlining a tour. And now in concert, Mary DeBerry. Singing those old 90s tunes, R&B. <laughs> 
I learned fear undermines our immune health. Breathing and prayer helps to improve it. Yes, gratitude, agree. Yes, thank you, Cher. Thank you for that. Yeah, and fear, we're not meant, here's a, and thank you for bringing that up. We're not meant to function in fear, right? We are not meant to function in fear. Fear shuts down everything. It shuts down, uh, uh, it shuts down our thought processing. It shuts down our brain development. Fear at a young age shuts down our brain development. Uh, it shuts down our vital organs, makes them work differently, right? It shuts down our immune system. So we're not meant to be in that fearful place. And I think that's one of the lessons that we learn is what helped you, what helped you deal with the fear during this time, because that might be your new go-to, right? Of helping ourselves stay healthy and well, right? Uh, a couple more that I want to read here. And um, uh, there we go. Welcome, 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 Julie. Shy, hey, Shy. Carl, thank you again. Good, good, good. All right. <laughs> Penny Denny. <laughs> they live in concert. Mary to Mary and Penny Denny. Get your tickets now. <laughs> All right. Some good words. Thank you. And, and uh, hey, that's part of the joy of just being on these powers is seeing who's there and who's what people are saying. I hope you have a wonderful week. And I hope that you continue to join us on these power hours. If you find them helpful, please let us know and uh, we'll put it out there. If you ever want us to cover a topic, uh, send us a message in the messenger, Facebook messenger, uh, something that we can address. Uh, please let us know. And again, starting in September, we'll be back to uh, uh, going out there and doing some. We uh, have some online things that we're still going to do. And pretty soon we'll be back to in person with our training. So that's coming up pretty soon, too. I know some of you are hoping that we could be in Hawaii in a couple of months. We're not quite there yet, but we'll, we will be there soon and uh, just spending that time with you again. So, but oh, thank you for this time and you all have a wonderful, beautiful day. And cut and stop. And where's that button? There it is. Bye.